And finally, information... U.S. Attorney General William Barr speaking ahead of the release of a redacted version of Robert Mueller's report on the Russia investigation. Well, joining us live now is Lancaster University's Dr. Robert Gujar. Now, Robert, what was your reaction to what Mr. Barr has just said and how it was delivered tonight? You know, it's it's unusual for uh, someone in, in Mr. Barr's position to spin this uh, report before it's actually released. Uh, we, we saw an executive summary about what uh, would be in the report and, and what's coming out, but I think there's been so much concern about what's redacted, the last points that he's addressing right now in his in his talk, uh, that he wanted to come forward and, and make clear what the accusations might be, and, and apparently there aren't any accusations from this uh, from this investigation that Donald Trump has done absolutely nothing wrong uh, in the last uh, two years, which is going to really fuel the Democrats uh, and, uh, and calm the Republicans, it sounds like, um, in the next few weeks. How do you think the Democrats are reacting right now? What will they pick from Mr. Barr's uh, speech there uh, to, to focus on? Well, I, I think, you know, as, as you heard, it's very legal language, and there are a lot of uh, lawyers in Congress. So they're, they're certainly going to be interested in the legal definition of collusion and conspiracy and all the different terms that are, that are being used. Because, quite frankly, when you have members of Trump's team uh, in jail or going to jail for things that they have done related to uh, Donald Trump's campaign and, and behaviors, uh, payoffs, and uh, different questionable uh, things. A, a lot of folks on the Democratic side are going to be uh, asking really tough questions about, well, how, you know, what constitutes uh, collusion? Uh, there was uh, some readings in this executive summary that, um, you, you know, a lot of the stuff Donald Trump does and says is public uh, on Twitter uh, and out uh, in press conferences and at rallies. And it almost seems like, well, if you're doing things so publicly, it's impossible for you to also uh, be charged with collusion because you've you've put all of your thoughts out there. So it's going to be a really interesting few weeks as people dissect what these 400 pages have to say. Now, I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Professor, that the, the move by Mitch McConnell doesn't necessarily guarantee that he will bring up the bill for a vote. But if he does, is this just a game of political chess likely to kill off all of the three measures altogether. Well, what we're what we're also seeing that's playing into this is the January fifth uh, Senate race in uh, in Georgia, and so a, a lot of this is is trying to curry favor with with American voters because that decision is going to decide who's going to run, uh, who's going to hold control in the U.S. Senate, uh, and and so the, even though there are lots of co complexities and in general uh, what looks like a dismay um, on Capitol Hill. There's, there's also a, an understanding that we need to have voters go to the polls and make decisions um, that would influence a Senate hold uh, under a Biden presidency. And so uh, one of the, the main issues here is how do we get those voters to go to the polls uh, to secure the Senate for, for either side? And, and but, but what they're doing at the same time is having voters be concerned about how American democracy works. This is going back into the normalcy, I guess, of U.S. politics pre-Donald Trump, which kind of fits to Donald Trump's rhetoric over the time that government can't get anything done. And so, you know, even though he sat on that bill for five days and delayed uh, a lot of things and added a lot of concerns about whether people would get unemployment benefits and whatnot from the first bill, um, you, you know, he's he's actually proving a point in, a, in, a, in his own kind of bizarre way of, of running politics that Government is its own enemy at, at times and certainly isn't necessarily thinking about um, the average American who, who could use that money, but also um, who's looking to the government for some sort of certainty, particularly now in, in the middle of a pandemic. To 2100 on October the 2nd, the second of the private jets departs for Riyadh. No sign of Khashoggi and still no sign of his body. Robert Gucci is a former Washington Post reporter and senior lecturer at Lancaster University. He joins us now via Skype from Lancaster. Robert, uh, good to have you with us. Let's get something out of the way straight away. The credibility of these uh, U.S. media reports, quoting as they, uh, they are the Washington Post, anonymous sources within the CIA, the timing of them as well, coming out late on a, on a Friday night. Just how credible are they? Well, there's always this kind of uh, phrase that you throw things out with the trash uh, on Fridays on Capitol Hill, meaning you bring things out uh, at the end of the week 
when it's the weekend and people aren't necessarily at the water cooler to talk about uh, these things. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, that the report is uh, not credible. Uh, it certainly uh, is coming from the CIA. The Washington Post uh, does a very good job of vetting its sources. Uh, they, they take it very seriously when they use anonymous sources. Um, but it, it, it's coming after the midterm elections, uh, first of all, in the United States, and then coming out on the weekend certainly does seem to indicate what type of priority this is for uh, the Trump administration. So what happens now? Will President Trump be forced to take more punitive action against the crown prince? Well, you know, this story had to come to an end. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, it had to be completed at some point. And, and uh, this sort of this sort of response uh, from the CIA it coming out on a weekend, it coming out after the midterm elections, there isn't really anything uh, that's holding Trump to the fire here. Uh, there's the, there doesn't seem to be, <clears throat> excuse me, a huge uprising in the United States that a journalist from Saudi Arabia and from uh, America has been murdered potentially, and it sure seems uh, by the direction of uh, a head of state uh, elsewhere. Uh, this doesn't seem to be a, a big issue for Amer the American public, but it is quite concerning that that the Trump administration has uh, been pushing off any sort of responsibility uh, to those higher levels of authority uh, and instead um, saying this was just kind of a, a business deal gone wrong. I'd like to welcome now Robert Gucci, associate professor in the Department of Sociology at Lancaster University and the editor of the book Trump Presidency, Journalism and Democracy. Good of you to join us. Um, this is obviously undeniably a scoop for The New Yorker at times, but just how damaging really is it for President Trump, especially the image that he tries to project, that of a very successful uh, businessman? Do you think he can reset the narrative and turn this around in his favor? Well, it certainly is going to be a talking point from the Democrats that he's going to have to deal with. So it's going to be uh, more than a mild annoyance uh, for him. But uh, for the true Trump supporters, uh, it, it makes you wonder how much it's going to take for them to to jump ship. I mean, these are these are folk who already don't like to pay taxes. Uh, there's a joke that two things you can uh, uh, know are going to happen are taxes and death. Uh, and so, you know, for them, if Donald Trump can get away without paying taxes and still have buildings with his name on it, although some of those are licensed, he doesn't necessarily own the buildings, uh, he's, he's still a great businessman and someone that they can look up to. They don't want to pay their taxes either. Now, this is a president who defies convention. It, it is it's really quite difficult to keep track of the number of controversies that we have seen during his term in office. What is the picture that emerges from this New York Times piece? Well, you know, the New York Times and other media outlets have shown a lot of the, the dealings of Donald Trump, his, his take on race when he was, uh, you know, first starting out building and developing in New York, uh, and uh, all the way through his own admissions to bankruptcy, his own admissions to uh, having difficulty in, in business, but then always uh, following through. It, it, this is one that's not going to go away quickly. I mean, now that we have these debates coming up, it's not like uh, he can bring up uh, yet another controversy every single day. This one's going to this one's going to stick for for a bit. But at the end of the at the end of the night uh, on November third, people are going to have to ask the question of, okay, so maybe he did pay taxes. Do I still think that he has uh, America going in a good direction? And if they think it is, both ideologically and financially, uh, then then he's gonna he's gonna sit in for another four years. Polls this time include the government's response to the coronavirus pandemic and the government response to police brutality. Natasha Chen, CNN, Marietta, Georgia. Well, let's bring in Robert Gucci, who teaches sociology at Lancaster University in England. Robert, great to have you with us. What is your take on the incredible scenes that we're witnessing across the U.S. where Americans are casting um, early votes? What does it say? I mean, for those who rally for the republic, this certainly is a, a huge win and shows us maybe how voting needs to change and has needed to change for a long time in the United States, not early voting, but through technology and through the Postal Service, something that Donald Trump actually was trying uh, to, to get rid of. But uh, this is um, showing a lot of enthusiasm and uh, maybe having us think differently about trying to get everything done in such a short time. Now, don't know if that means people are going to want to wait a few days for results. That may need uh, a few more years before we can uh, do that over a few days. But this is a good sign for those who uh, want to see the republic and the demo uh, democracy uh, take hold. 
Well, let's now return to our coverage of the U.S. president's impeachment, hearing, impeachment hearings in Washington. Dr. Robert Gutcher is an expert on U.S. politics at the University of Lancaster, from where he joins me. Now, good to talk to you, Robert. What a day it was. In the analysis after this pivotal day, was this bombshell testimony, as it's been described, enough to lead to impeachment? Well, certainly you are hearing from some staunch Republicans that it just might be. Uh, you know, it certainly didn't help that uh, Donald Trump's uh, reaction to this was, I want nothing, I want nothing, uh, on notes that, that he had walked out with. Uh, yeah, a bit of a circus, I, I think, in terms of how the White House has, has handled that. Uh, and so, yes, hearing this sort of testimony that everybody knew what was going on, that this was very clearly... Uh, a political move and that there were so many people concerned about it has moved uh, even the most staunch Republicans to question uh, maybe this really was something uh, bad and something that will lead to uh, an actual impeachment uh, hearing.